Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we're going to talk about the four count. The four count is one of my favorite mobility drills. This is something that we use for squat depth. If you do fight, this drill is something that you're gonna find in BJJ and Krav Maga and all kinds of things because it's part of getting straight up from the ground. It's used in many different systems because it's very useful. So people will call it all different types of things. I call it four count, call it whatever you want, doesn't matter. Our four count is gonna start from our bottom position and we are gonna set up into a crab position. You can either do this with your hips starting up or your hips starting down. If you're advanced, hips probably start up. If you're a normal person, probably start hips down. Two feet flat on the ground, hips shoulder width apart. Your feet are the same distance that they are apart in your squat. We would still like to point our feet generally straight ahead because pointing your feet out on this, you can do it, it's just weird. Two hands point back, lift the chest up. We are going to rotate across, Snap all the way forward to our rock bottom position. Your feet can move here any way they want. It doesn't really matter. We would like them straight ahead, but if you're like me and you got to shift a little bit to get around knee surgery and surgical scars, totally fine. Other hand, find the ground. That's one, two, three, four. Other side, right, left, left, right, change side, left, right, right, left. Point of this exercise is it's part of a get up. If you've ever been in BJJ and you're doing a crawl backwards, it could either be like a tank tread crawl backwards or a crab crawl backwards, then you have to get up. This is part of a whole series of get ups that are taught in martial arts. Crab, crawl back, tank, crawl back, figure out how to get up to your feet and stand up. There are different versions of this get up. There would be standing straight up, as this one is. There would be like a crab get up. There would be a hip drop get up. There'd be all these different types of get ups, but this is an essential piece for it. You can definitely use this activity as a warm up for all squatting activities. Doesn't matter if it's barbell, kettlebell, club bell, or martial arts. If you can't get into this position at the bottom of your squat, then your core is probably not supporting you all the way yet, or you need to work on your hip mobility. This is one of the exercises that does that thing. Starting at the top, you can start with your arms straight out and head. Doesn't really matter, but this is stylistically something that you will see people do in order to help them know if they're leaning way far forward or if they're rocking back, 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 deeper into their squat. Pick a hand, right, one, Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. Stand all the way up. Many people will not be immediately able to do this drill because many sports and many types of lifting do not require people to go rock bottom. Many people advocate against it. I don't know why, but they do. We can do our same dinosaur training squat idea with this activity, and we can use props to put behind us to elevate our hands to help us figure out how to do this rotation over time. Many people, when they come in here, they most, most people have terrible squat pattern like in general. And this is that exercise that will help fix it. So this goes to the beginning of like almost everybody's workout that I train and we use it continuously for years as a wake up at the beginning of a session. And we'll put it in for either reps, but we normally do it for time. And this would go into a whole series of hip warm ups, each one being done for one minute. For people with that more limited hip mobility, we will give them a target to allow them to get to this position and figure out how to recover. Go down, target, find that position, come back out, figure out how to stand up. And then of course, we can remove mats over time. Go down, find the mat, open the chest up, come forward, 
stand all the way up. In this movement, you'll see one hand goes back and this hand is going to this shoulder before it opens up. So what we are doing is rotating one way, rotating open, rotating our spine, and coming all the way up. Hand down, touch, find the ground, open the chest, touch. Use this movement, this big swinging movement, to help you regain your feet. So you're using the weight of your arm to drag yourself forward over your ankles, your knees, and your hips to get back into position where your core can more effectively fire. The goal is to have our core fire through more ranges of motion instead of less. So we're always trying to do this. If you're doing lots of barbell back squatting, you're going up and down. There might be some pitch forward and back in there, but this is going to allow us to see if we can move equally well in both directions at the bottom of the movement so that we can figure out if we're getting tweaks or anything in barbell squats. A lot of time you'll do barbell squats, you'll stack on weight. One side of your spine will freak out a little bit or one hip will freak out a little bit. You'll then have to download and work up to it again after physical therapy or black ball or something like that. This way you can figure out if you try to go one way and it works fine and you try to go the other way and it doesn't work at all, we found one thing that we can improve upon in order to help our squat performance. Doesn't matter what it is, barbell, kettlebell, kettlebell, mace, sandbag. Doesn't matter at all, this drill works for everything. This has been Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica.